Hi class, this is a short video on the celestial sphere, the ecliptic, and the constellations. This is material that's contained in chapter two of our textbook, and this is a pretty quick treatment of it. Uh, it's not comprehensive, so make sure to read this chapter at least once. It tends to be kind of abstract at first, and you really have to think about all of these things, like the earth and the sun and the stars. You have to think about this in three dimensions, and how the night sky changes due to the Earth's rotation and the Earth's motion around the sun. Uh, that's, that's what we're talking about in today's lecture. When you go outside at night, so here's a, a star chart that you might use if you go out stargazing on, on a particular night. And um, this allows you to identify some of the features in the night sky and you can take the stars that are up on that night and you can break them into these patterns, which we call constellations. So it's very useful and it's, um, it's been used for, for many years. And in the past, people have uh, assigned uh, special stories to these constellations. When you look at these groupings of stars in the night sky, it's very important to keep in mind that there's not really any significance to their relative location to each other because you're looking at a projection and when you look at any given constellation the stars that make up that constellation are all at completely different distances so even though they look like they're right next to each other as viewed from earth uh, they could be at very very different distances from earth and they really have no relation to each other it's just how they appear from our location, Earth. Um, so looking at this thing, another thing to keep in mind, when you look at the bright stars in the night sky, you're typically looking at stars that are a few hundred to a handful of thousands of light years away. To put that into perspective, look at this so um, this is a cartoon of the galaxy that we live in I know we haven't really discussed this yet but it's good to at least take a quick look at it uh, the galaxy is a grouping of hundreds of billions of stars including the Sun that we orbit on earth and um, it's the stars are kind of compressed into this flattened pancake shape this is where we're located right here in our galaxy. And when you look out at the night sky, like I said, you're looking at most a few thousand light years away. And that's just looking at this little neighborhood of the galaxy that we're in right now. The galaxy itself is about 100,000 light years in diameter. So when you're looking at the stars in the night sky, you're just looking at the stars in our neighborhood right here. You can't see these um, stars that are much further away. There's uh, gas and dust which obscures our view. So that's keep that in mind when you look at the night sky. You're just you're just looking at relatively nearby stars relative to the size of our entire galaxy. There's a couple other features that I want to point out in this uh, star map here. There's this thing called the ecliptic, and there's this thing called the celestial equator. And both of these are located fairly high in the sky. So this is your northern horizon, your western, southern, and eastern horizon. This right here is looking straight up. And you see the ecliptic and the celestial equator are, are pretty high up um, in the sky in the star map. And this is what we want to really understand in this video today. These constellations that you see on any given night, this is just a fraction of the total number of stars that are visible from Earth. Um, some stars are only visible at night during the winter, and other stars are only visible at night during the summer. And also, there are some stars that we never see from a place like Ventura because they are um, only visible from the southern hemisphere. So you'd have to travel south of the equator to see uh, other parts of the night sky. But if you piece all of that together, um, all of the night sky visible different times of the year and visible from the northern and southern hemisphere, um, you, can, you can break up the entire night sky for all observers on Earth 
into uh, this patchwork of the total number of 88 constellations. So astronomers have agreed to take the entire sky and break it up into 88 patches, and we they all have names. And there they are. All right, so these are the 88 constellations. Um, just a little sneak preview right here, this thing called the ecliptic, which I'm about to explain. Uh, you notice that the constellations that line up with the ecliptic, these are probably the ones you've heard of. These are the constellations of the zodiac, and we'll say a few words about that in a second. So this concept of the celestial sphere, which we introduce in chapter two, this is very important in, in both this chapter and the upcoming chapter, chapter three, which, when we include the moon. And this is this is not something that's real, but it's it's a useful tool in astronomy. We are, of course, located here on Earth. So this is where we observe the stars from. And what we do is we imagine that the stars, since they're all at these enormous distances, just in terms of the way that they look from Earth, we can imagine, even though, again, this is not real, that the stars are all located on this imaginary sphere. And the stars are so far away that their relative pattern next to each other, it basically remains fixed, which is the pattern of the constellations. And then as the Earth rotates at the center, it appears as though these more or less stationary stars, it appears as though they are the things that are orbiting. Even though it's really us, we are the ones that are rotating on the Earth due to the Earth's rotation. And so this is what the stars look like throughout the night be due to the Earth's rotation. This is something called diurnal motion. So if you were to look in the northern sky, you would actually, and if you were to keep track of the stars throughout the night, you actually see that they trace out these paths. So this is a long exposure photograph right there. All right, let's get to the, the ecliptic. So here is a cartoon out of our book, and this shows the sun, and it shows the Earth orbiting the sun. And if you imagine that the distant stars are out here, so the celestial sphere is even further out, as we orbit around the sun, different times of the year, the sun, from, uh, from our vantage point, the sun lines up with different parts of the ecliptic. And as the Earth moves around the sun, as it orbits the sun, the apparent location of the sun as it lines up with the celestial sphere, the sun appears to move around in a circle throughout the year. And that path that the sun takes is called the ecliptic. Here's a nice cartoon out of the book. And this shows the celestial sphere. It shows the path that the sun appears to take over the course of the year, this ecliptic right here. There's another... Um, important feature of the celestial sphere, which is the uh, celestial equator, which is just if you take the Earth's equator and you extend it out to the imaginary celestial sphere, you have a, a path called the celestial equator. And again, the ecliptic is the path that the sun appears to take. Of course, that's due to the Earth's motion around the sun. But to us, if we think of ourselves as stationary, it looks like the sun is orbiting us. There's two locations where the sun crosses the celestial equator, where, sorry, the ecliptic crosses the celestial equator. These are the two equinoxes. This is where the sun is located um, on the first day of spring and the first day of autumn. And then there's these two other locations where the sun is located on the longest day of the year, the summer solstice, and the shortest day of the year, the winter solstice. So this is a very quick treatment of the ecliptic. It's a very abstract concept. You have to think about it and you know try to piece this together. It helps to you know just um, imagine what the sun looks like as the Earth is orbiting around it. Anyways, once you have the idea of the ecliptic, then you can think about the constellations which line up with the ecliptic. These are the famous 12 zodiac constellations. And in this picture right here, you can kind of imagine that as the Earth orbits around the sun like this, different days of the year, the sun is going to line up with different constellations. And this set of 12 constellations, these, these are the constellations that the sun appears to line up with as the Earth orbits it throughout the year. 
I'm going to um, post another video on a uh, Zodiac Constellation project, and I will see you over there.